What starts as a normal Ada post turns into sad story of drag abuse, infidelity, and emotional turmoil. My wife is usually an angel of a woman, but she has recently gotten into a friendship with a woman whom I personally believe is a bad influence on her. Not in a patronizing way, more of a lay down with dogs, get up with fleas type of situation. I never said anything about her childishness or her very radical misandry, because frankly, it doesn't affect me. Until it did. A few months ago, my wife began pressuring me to do more around the house. Before I got an instant itta, we already split chores and child care. Admittedly, she had a bigger cut than I because she is a psalm, but I do most of the cooking, breakfasts and dinners. Lunch is her responsibility for herself and the boys. I take out the garbage, I do laundry, and I deep clean the bathrooms once a week. I also help with our boys' homework and such. She insists that I am not doing enough, and that I should be doing more around the house. I tried having discussions with her, asking what she expected from me namely. All chores and child rearing should be my duty, it seems, and for months it seemed to be going nowhere. She used the D word more than once when speaking on this, which felt manipulative. It boiled over when we were out with friends one night, and she began talking about how I never helped out, and how I used her as a house slave her words. I will admit, I saw red. This next part is where I may be the arsehole. I didn't say anything that night, but the next day I asked my boss to be given reduced hours for the next little bit due to stress, and I took over everything in the house. I cooked breakfast and made lunch for the boys before I drove them to school. I cleaned the house from top to bottom. I did every dish we had twice and so on. My wife was blindingly happy and bragged to her friend that she finally had me worn in. She didn't lift a finger for around a month. Then she began asking why we never went on dates anymore and complaining that she wanted to get her nails done as they were growing. I explained that I had to take that out of our budget so we could continue to afford everything else, but we could absolutely have a movie night in, and I could paint her nails for her. She was unhappy with that solution so I asked her if she would want to get a part-time job to pay for either luxuries. You would have thought I asked if she wanted to join a cult. She then asked if I could just pick up more shifts at work to cover her other expenses and use the phrase, be a man, which I found more than a little insulting. I then asked her if she would be willing to go back to splitting the chores and such, which is when she began to catch on that the two were related. She yelled at me that I was being a manipulative arsehole for doing this and even claimed it was a financial word. I stood strong for a while, but now I am questioning my methods because even I feel what I did was a bit underhanded. So Ada, relevant comments. Why are you still with her when she treats you like that? I love her. With everything I have, she's an excellent mother, and honestly, before she met this friend, we were both blissfully happy to the best of my knowledge. How did she suddenly notice that she wasn't getting her nails done or going out on dates? Did you block the credit card from everything but the grocery store? No, for one, she has her own card though we do only have one bank account. I set her nail and hair appointments because she hates making phone calls, and she asked why I didn't take her out anymore. She could have spent from the card without saying anything I suppose, but upon budgeting, we would have been in trouble if 300 plus were gone from a night out with friends. More about his wife and their relationship. She had always wanted to be a psalm before we got together. I try not to say this part because, while her two boys are not mine biologically, they are my sons. But being a single mother was incredibly taxing for her, because working in public was too much. I had a bit of experience with being a single father myself. I have a son of my own, but I was looking to advance my career, and was more than happy to take over the bills for a lesson load at home. You're paying to raise another man's children. I do not like this comment. Those are my kids. No one else's, and regardless of what happens with their mother ever, I hope those boys know that. More about how things have changed. Oh God, I can tell you but it may be a bit mundane. When we first got married, she would give me shoulder and back massages every day after work and have my favorite music playing when I opened the door, even though she hates bluegrass. She would make my coffee while I was getting dressed. She made sure to pick up extra crunchy peanut butter from the store, even though I'm the only person who likes it. We would have movie night twice a week with the kids and a date night to ourselves once a week. I have always had trouble sleeping, and I don't want to take pills for it, so she always had the bed ready for me a heating pad already turned on, and my pajamas on the bed. She would run her fingers through my hair until I fell asleep, and she would wake me up herself instead of the alarm because she knew it put me in a better mood, none of which I asked for. She's a good wife and wanted to because she knew that's what I liked, and she did it. She hasn't done a 180. Some of this is still true, or at least it was until I cut down my hours. That was really when she stopped doing anything at all, and right now she's pissed, 
so I'm on the couch. Awake and regretful. Personally, I think she's stubborn. I don't think she even really wants it. She just wants to prove that I would do it if she asked. She has a troubled history with men, and that's why I tend to be forgiving when things do happen. Troubled history with men. It's not something I'm comfortable talking about. But believe me when I say, what happened was not her fault. OP is voted NTA. Update. Six days later. How do I 38M explain to, or help my sons understand, that their mother 30F is going to rehab? I have never been in a situation like this. I am a former addict myself, but I didn't have children then. See my last post for more clarification editor's note. I tried several different engines and search tactics, but couldn't find any other last post besides the A to 1. But the gist of it is that my wife, and I recently had a blowout argument where she admitted to using two substances for several months and has agreed to get checked into rehab, which we are currently setting up now. How the hell do I bring this up to them without them being judgmental or hateful toward their mother? Or worse, falling into the same mental space I am in. I don't want to lie to them, which is what my wife wants, but I am failing to see an alternative that won't destroy them or the respect they have for their mother. I am swimming blind here, and I have barely slept since this all came out. Any and all advice is appreciated. Thank you in advance. Relevant comments. I think it depends. What was she taking? Clonopin and Adipex that she was buying from her friend. She also admitted to having tried coke and several other prescription narcotics. But those were the only two she did often. Was this the friend that turned her on to radical misandry? Yes. Though it's come to light that it wasn't misandry she was being taught, but flagrant drug usage, I have told her that she should have no contact with this friend or else. She will be facing divorce along with everything else. How old are the kids? 9, 12, and 14. Update 2. 10 days from the OG post. I yelled at my wife. See my profile for details. But I was driving my wife to the rehabilitation center we decided on. On the way, she was screaming at me. She can't believe I'm humiliating her like this explaining what was happening to the boys and making her message her dealer or friend that they would not be hanging out or using together anymore. About how she doesn't want to go and that I am a controlling monster, and how threatening her with divorce and taking primary custody of the boys was too far. And I was insane, and I just took it, and took it, and took it, until I just couldn't, and I screamed at her. I screamed that the woman I met would have rather died than had a pillhead junkie around her sons, and how she disgusted me, and that I don't know if she knew how much I was considering leaving her. Not because of the addiction, but because of the way she was effing acting, like she hadn't brought drugs into our home. Around me, a former addict myself, and around our boys, I am beginning to hate her for doing that. She was becoming exactly what she always cried about her mother being. And she was lucky, I was here to see it before what happened to her happened to her goddamned sons. It makes me sick to say, but watching it sink in just how far she had spiraled felt good. Watching her realize that her actions have consequences was nice. She yelled a few more times that I was an abusive arsehole or whatever. But she was still crying, so I felt her heart wasn't in it. I plan on speaking to a lawyer. I don't want to divorce her, but I don't know how healthy our relationship could possibly be after this. I know yelling like that was wrong, but I don't feel bad. And that is the part that makes me think that maybe I shouldn't be married to her anymore. For her sake and my own. I don't know what else to do. And I'm so pissed that she detonated C4 in every bit of our lives. Relevant comments. I believe I'm going to have to divorce her. And it's wrecking me. I don't want to. I still love her but I don't know if I trust myself around her or not. I have been closer to relapsing this week than I ever have been. Update 3. 12 days from the last post, 3 weeks from the first post. She was cheating. Before you read, please know, this is a vent post. I normally would never be like this, but I am beyond okay and need to get this poison out of my head before I go anywhere else with it. She was effing cheating. The drug-dealing friend sent me effing videos of her dancing and grinding on this ugly, hick-looking bastard. I am goddamn destroyed. The boys are staying with my mother for a few days, and I'm taking the next week off work. I am so done. I have never been so angry in my goddamned life. She was so goddamned smug sending it. In case you don't realize you're replaceable to her. Well, the free ride stops here. I hope she can get on Medicaid for her Subaxone LM foul. I'm done. I saved the video immediately, and I'm going to see a lawyer ASAP. I can't tell anyone yet, because I want to do this SHT right. Thankful as F, my parents insisted on a prenup with what I at the time thought was an inhumane cheating clause. I have never been cheated on before, and I feel like tearing my goddamned hair out. I genuinely never thought she would turn out to be such a scummy piece of SHT. I cannot handle this.
I am not physically able to handle this. I haven't been able to keep food down, and I drank for the first time in over a decade last night. Then I woke up, and had to pour the rest down the drain, because I am about to spiral. And my boys don't need both mom and dad in rehab right now. I am so close to losing my goddamned mind. Also, believe what you want. But stop sending me private messages about how I should take down the posts, or that posting about my personal relationship with my wife is wrong please. Leave me be, it will not work. This is the only place I can talk about this SHT. Editor's note. OP clarifies the kid situation, and who is related to who. Two of my three sons are stepsons. But I adopted them, they never had a father due to their biological dad being an absolute piece of SHT. My biological son is the youngest, and was born to a girlfriend who is not in the picture and doesn't want to be. My sons are 9, 12, and 14. She had two jobs when I met her, though they were both SHT jobs, and I had been looking into finding her a better one. When it comes to the dealer, she was getting the drugs from her friend, who is a woman, and a few of the men who she cheated with. Update 4. Three months from the OG post. My soon-to-be ex-wife is in the hospital after a self-harm attempt, and I feel like a monster. You can read my other posts for more context on what happened to get here if you like. But the short of it is, I was blind to my wife's addiction until she admitted it and went to rehab. While she was in rehab, I was sent evidence that she had been cheating, often with more than one person. I have been working on filing for divorce while she's in rehab, not just for the cheating, but because with that on top of everything else and myself, nearly sinking back into my own addiction due to the stress of the situation, I couldn't stand to even think of her anymore. And there's no healthy relationship that has room for that mindset. I honestly didn't want to be in a room with her again to try mediation or counseling due to the fact that the last time I was alone with her, I raised my voice, and at the time, even felt she deserved it. I of course now know that my doing that was terrible and could be considered abuse. Yet another reason I should not be in a relationship with this woman. I moved all of her belongings to our guest room, minus the pills I found hidden on her side table. I took pictures of those in their hiding spots, then flushed them. I also removed her from my bank account and credit cards. I spoke to my boys, explaining the situation without demonizing their mother to the best of my ability. And they seemed to understand I had no intention of abandoning them. And blood or not, they were my sons. Then she came home. The boys were, and still are, away at camp. A birthday present paid for by my mother. She was quiet. Eyes on the ground after the moment I picked her up at the facility all the way home. Once we got home, I led her to the guest room silently. And she didn't take it well, crying before she could even take the first step. Throughout the next couple weeks, I let her get settled, and though I stayed carefully neutral, I knew she could tell something was coming, but I wanted to be as fair as possible and try to let her get used to being out before I said anything, as that was one thing I myself hated about when I left rehab. Everything was flying at me so fast, I didn't have time to breathe. Finally, I asked her to sit on the couch, and I began explaining to her that I do not believe I can continue being married to her and that I want a divorce. I should have known her reaction was all wrong. She didn't say anything at all. She only nodded and cried quietly as I spoke. I explained that I did not intend to hurt her, but I could not be married to her anymore, and that maybe both of us should focus on being the best parents we can be. I told her I had no intentions of kicking her out, and that because of our prenup, the divorce should be cut and dry, and she should be safe to begin looking for employment now, and once she has a job, I will help her find an apartment. At this, she stood and walked to her room. I let her, because I thought she must have been overwhelmed, and this talk could wait. She didn't come out at dinner time, and I weighed whether I should leave her alone or not. Eventually, I decided to knock on the door and ask if she was hungry. Long story short, she had smuggled pills into my house. Somehow, or she had a stash I was unaware of, had an overdose, and was dead for several minutes in the ambulance. She's in a medically induced coma, because the doctors aren't sure exactly how much damage she's done to her brain, from what they've said. I feel like an absolute monster. I am like the scum of the earth. I should have just said nothing. I should have just dealt with it. Just. He held it in and stayed. I am responsible for this, and it kills me. I may not have the same love for her as I did, but I do feel so very sorry for everything she's been through. It's killing me. I haven't told my sons yet, and I am debating waiting until they're back from camp, so they can have a little more time without this on their minds on top of everything else. I am sorry for the grammar and such. I don't have the energy to edit this, but I wanted to get this off my chest. Relevant comments. Where's her family? Not my story to tell, but she doesn't have much family alive, and the ones who are, she's in no contact with. She has other friends, but I don't know which ones are enabling. They all know what's going on. 
I messaged all her friends, except the dealer, though she knows now what I know from the messages she sent me. She hasn't shown up to the hospital though, possibly because she thinks I would throw her out, which I would be tempted to do, to be entirely honest. A couple of her other friends visit all the time. Yes, she's had no contact with her mother, ironically, because of her addiction and bad treatment of her. The rest constantly insisted she should see her mother. And two times she even took her boys to her mother's house without her permission. One more clarification on the kids. Yes, because all of our children are from previous relationships. I have adopted the two eldest, who aren't mine biologically. Why he did it at that point? I wanted to do it while she's in rehab. But my therapist told me to reconsider, so I did. I was so angry when I found out about the cheating that I wanted to take her belongings to her dealer's house and leave them there. But I knew that was wrong. I knew that once my anger wore off, I would regret it. So now all I want to do is get the divorce started and over with as soon as possible, so that I can begin trying to pick up the pieces and move on with my life. On top of that, I didn't want to lead her on, and I could tell that she knew something was coming, because I can't even stand her touching me anymore. It makes me physically ill. If I had known she was going to end herself, I could have closed my eyes, gritted my teeth, and let her do whatever. But honestly, even now, after what she did, I know that isn't feasible for me. I still found myself wanting to start fights to yell. And I know that I am not a strong enough person to be in a relationship with someone who hurt me that much, who disrespected me, my home, and my children that much, who took my own past experiences with drugs into account so little that she brought them into my home, directly under the nose of myself and my children pun intended. This is as much kindness as I can afford to extend to her anymore for my own mental health. OP's comments five days later. Not awake yet. I took the advice of some of the commenters and went to go get my boys to see if they wanted to see their mother. I explained the situation to the best of my ability, age appropriate, and asked if they wanted to see her. They all agreed to see her eventually, but the eldest only wanted to go to support his brothers. I'm concerned about the anger he is building towards his mother, and I do intend to talk to him about it but I also don't want to tell him how to feel or tell him that his feelings are bad and wrong. I was already working to get them into therapy, but I'm going to expedite that. Cheating. There have been multiple pictures and videos of her dancing on or being inappropriate with men since that post. I haven't blocked the friend because she sent me a large amount of proof of infidelity for the divorce. And in that post, the guy she was dancing on was a man. Perhaps you are confused because her woman friend sent the video. Perhaps my wording was bad. I apologize. And yes, I do know that trauma is the gateway to addiction, as I am an addict and have my own CSA from my uncle and general abuse from both my parents, we went to counseling during my rehab, and our relationship is much better now, but growing up was very bad. I can't say I know what made her start using, but I can say I know she had a rough childhood, and even worse teen years. Editing to add, regardless of sexual identity, if I found out my wife was engaging in sexual acts with women, I would also consider it cheating. She was doing other sexually inappropriate things. But no, I didn't get any straight-up SX tapes. I would rather not go into it further, but I think you can get my drift. Final update. Seven months later. My wife is dead. My wife is dead. I haven't updated in a while, and I'm sorry. But I'm sure you can guess why I wasn't feeling up to it. I know that everyone said that she was manipulating me or trying to make me stay with her. But honestly, even if that was the case, it didn't matter because the moment she woke up, we both started crying and talking, and we didn't stop for days. She went back into rehab for a little while, came out, and we did both couples and solo therapy for both of us. She seemed happy. She seemed better, and I had hoped that the crazy was over, and that we would just be happy again. I didn't update then because, frankly, I was scared of how everyone would react. I don't do well at getting yelled at. She promised me that if anything happened, or if there was anything she needed to talk to me about, she wouldn't hesitate. Everything was going well. And now when I ask myself if there were signs she would go back, or that she never stopped, the answer is no. Nothing except the fact that she had an overdose at her friend's house, while I was working and died on her couch. The friend didn't even want to call an ambulance. Her boyfriend had to convince her to. I don't think either of them were arrested that day, but I know from the paper that she was picked up a couple of months ago for selling. Everyone kept telling me to go to the police, and frankly, maybe I should have. But frankly, with the way the police act, it wouldn't do much good. Since then, I have been drifting terribly. I took up smoking again, something I quit before I got married because she hated the smell. I hate it now too the smell I mean, but the hand to mouth is nice. My sons are in therapy and are taking the loss as well as they could be expected to. The younger two talk about her a lot, but the eldest is mostly angry. 
I'm thankful he doesn't seem to want to say things to his brothers about it. But I always let him tell me anything he's thinking, even when it breaks my heart. I know that maybe everyone here has an idea of who my wife was. But one thing that you could never deny was how much she loved our boys. They were her pride and joy absolutely everything to her. I miss her. I miss her so much that it feels like a death rattle to breathe. There's never music when I get home anymore, and I hate it. I hate the quiet so much that some days before I go inside, I sit in the car and just cry because I know she won't be there. I haven't even been able to clean out her side of the bathroom yet. It hurts too much to think about getting rid of her perfume or her toothbrush. I haven't felt like writing for obvious reasons, but there's something that feels important now, so I will. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. On the way home from work recently, I caught myself calculating flower prices before I remembered that I have no one to give them to unless I put them on her grave. I remember being pissed off at how expensive roses were getting, and now that seems so silly. I just wanted to say that if you have someone you love, please cherish them. Do something extra nice for the person you love tomorrow, for my sake. Nothing crazy, but maybe you can dance around the living room to your song or read to each other. Something soft or good, to let them know you're real and really really there. I know that's so cliche and corny, and if Alex were here now, she would actively bully me. But sadly, the old bastards were always right. Life is short. Isn't that a kick in the arse? Relevant comments. Smoking. I know I should quit smoking. I don't do it in the house because the smell really does make me sick after a while. I only really do it at night or in the early mornings. I'm considering getting one of those flavored air ones that are going around with no smoke or whatever so I can keep the hand-to-mouth thing, which I like a lot and missed. It's not the best compromise, but it's something. Try Widow Support on Reddit. I might, honestly, thank you. Any kind of emotional support right now is going to be welcome. It's hard for me to be emotional around my boys because I hate to make them feel like they're ever in a position where they need to take care of me poor kids have been through enough without me losing it. But I've been such a mess that they've caught me crying in my car more often than I'd like. Not to imply that I refuse to cry around them at all. I hate them seeing exactly how much of a wreck I am. Are you in therapy? I'm in therapy, but it's a long process, especially considering I'm a former addict myself. The entire situation has aged me a decade in a year. As someone whose dad went through similar SHD, cry in front of them. It's okay. I can try. It just always makes me feel so guilty. I know I shouldn't, but I always just think to myself, what are you doing? You're meant to be taking care of them, not the other way around. I hate to think that they ever feel the need to walk on eggshells around me, because I'm too much of a wreck to handle something. I know that's a bad answer, but it's true. It just always comes across to me that those are my boys, and I am their dad. I am supposed to be stronger than this for them. And I don't mean to imply that crying is weak or wrong. I just don't know how to turn, it's okay to cry into, it's okay for me to cry in my head. Then of course I mostly mean now, after everything. At the funeral, there was no helping it, and for the first few days after that, I was such a mess that my parents came to stay with us because they were concerned I wasn't sleeping. This exchange OP, and the commenter who wrote the above statement about crying. Commenter. Yeah, you can't help your feelings. But I am sure your little dude has feelings, and when he sees you not exhibiting those same feelings, he may think that those feelings are wrong. But that could be my own baggage. Do what you need to for yourself, my dude. But that just stood out to me. OP. Thank you genuinely. I will keep that in mind. I hadn't fully considered that, if I'm being honest, but I can work on it. One last thought from OP. Not defending her is so hard for me. But that was the first thing my therapist told me when I asked about my sons. That defending her to them wasn't going to help. And that all I could do was let them talk. My eldest is the only one who really rages about it, but the younger two will eventually, I'm sure. I am also angry, in this helpless kind of way that hurts so bad I can't stand to think about it. Because if she had just talked to me, I could have helped her, and she would still be here. I am a former addict myself, and I know I made so many mistakes with my wife, but I swear it was like everything was so good again. We slept in the same bed again and had dates. Everything in my mind just wants to scream and beg to know why she would do this, and I can't. I hate it so much because I tried so very hard not to love her anymore when she was alive, and it didn't work then. I don't see myself doing any better now that she's gone. And it hurts even worse because when other people are mad or say negative things, I still want to defend her, to explain every little reason she had, and why it wasn't all her fault. But in the end, it doesn't even matter if I do because she is gone. She won't be here to reap the benefits of that defense, or even to care that I changed minds. She won't be here to be respected or disrespected. It feels pointless, but I still want to, and it makes me feel like a effing moron. 
update. Please. Since my last post, I have been receiving many private messages, most of them incredibly kind, but a select few people are being very cruel. Please stop saying my wife was better off dead, or that I somehow wanted this, or worse, I hoped for it. I love my wife. I know that I made some truly terrible decisions and said things I did not mean especially while she was in rehab the first time, and hindsight is 2020. But if you think that at any point I have wanted any harm to come to my wife, you're wrong. Truthfully, I don't know that I am capable of moving past what has happened, and your cruelty does not help me to think otherwise. If you hate me enough to insinuate that I killed my wife indirectly, or that she somehow deserved to die because of bad decisions she made in active addiction, please just leave me alone. Please. To the kind people who have private messaged me, some of whom I've had lovely discussions with, thank you for your words and advice. Honestly, just knowing that so many people care about my family is touching to the point of tears in and of itself. So the fact that you reached out privately to tell me your stories or give advice or guidance is something I can never adequately thank you for. But I wish I could. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.